Good morning everybody and welcome to today's webinar which is talking about a comparison between DECT and voice over Wi-Fi technologies and the point of today's webinar is to cover off some key points on the differences between these two technologies and look at which one may be a better fit for a particular customer opportunity that you have based on a number of factors of importance to both the customer and ourselves as the integrator. I think we'll just jump straight into it. Um, we've got a, a reasonable number of points to cover off, so we'll get straight into it. My name's Chris Pulsford. I'm the National Partner Enablement Manager for Wavelink. And the key points that we want to address today when looking at both these technologies, and these are the points that will ultimately determine which of these technologies or solutions would be the better fit for a particular customer opportunity. And at a high level, these include the operating environment that the solution will be deployed into, the suitability and features of the particular solution and how they match the needs of the customer. The customer's budget, obviously this is typically probably the first area that the customer themselves will look at. The application integration potential, which is a really key point today, given that these devices, while they are primarily a cordless telephony solution, also fill the role of you know, a number of different devices or historically tasks that were performed on a number of different devices, but today, in a lot of cases, can be consolidated into the cordless telephony handset. So given that that is the case and that's something that continues to evolve and develop over time, um, you know, this becomes more and more critical as time goes on. And the technical capability of ourselves as the integrator and the complexity of each solution and how that level of complexity and the particular skill sets required to be successful in deploying and managing the solution ongoing match to our own technical capability. And it may be the case that you're currently and, and maybe for some time have been deploying and managing one of these two solutions uh, and you may be interested to examine how you might migrate or, or you know come to take the other solution into your offering portfolio as well while maintaining uh, the one that you currently already do. So there are some key differences between the solutions. There are also some key similarities as well and we'll have a look at those and, and what they are in a more detailed view. Just briefly, today's webinar really is looking at the technologies in general rather than a specific vendor or solution. So you know, keep in mind that while we as Wavelink and the distributor for Spectralink who have a, a solution in both voice over Wi-Fi and ACT, uh, we're looking at it in the context of Spectralink. This really does apply much more generally. So any enterprise deck or voice over Wi-Fi solution, and I do want to stress enterprise because some of the, the features and capabilities that we're looking at today wouldn't exist on a, let's say, a, a lower end solution in either deck or voice over Wi-Fi. But um, we'll be looking at in the context of Spectralink, but they, it does apply elsewhere as well. So for those of you that haven't worked with either technology, um, that may be the case as well. You're looking to get into cordless telephony. Spectralink, um, you know, they focus solely on wireless telephony products. So very narrow focus and as a result, um, very, very good product range in both these solutions. And I'm certainly not going to go through all this information here, but you can see there from that slide that Spectralink have been around in one shape or form for a very long time and certainly are experts in the field of telephony and, as we said specifically today, wireless telephony. One thing I definitely don't want to sort of go down the path of saying today is that, you know, this is a competition between DEC and voice over wireless land or voice over Wi-Fi. It certainly isn't. Both are valid solutions and fulfill a specific need in the market. So it's certainly not, um, you know, something where at the end of the day or the end of the presentation we'll have a, a comprehensive um, victory or um, determination either way that one is a, a better technology. It's really about suitability suitability for the particular opportunity that you're looking at and 
um, depending on the specifics of that, either of these may be a better fit. One thing that is definitely worth mentioning is the rise of voice over Wi-Fi or voice over wireless LAN. You can see from this information here that it really is a technology that has been you know, increasingly deployed in huge numbers over the last sort of five years and the projection is that will continue and one of the main drivers or probably the main driver for that happening is customers today are deploying enterprise wireless LAN and they're not necessarily doing that primarily for a voice over Wi-Fi solution but they're doing it because there's a whole lot of applications and devices that can use Wi-Fi to deliver a lot of value to their business. So um, you, you'd see that out, <coughs> excuse me, in the in the world at large. But that is enabling voice to be run as an application on a wireless LAN. So that's really what's driven wireless LAN, as well as the capabilities and benefits of the solution of voice over Wi-Fi. It's the accessibility as a technology due to the wide deployment base of wireless LAN as we see it today. And we're really talking about pervasive wireless LAN. So it covers, you know, every area within a business's operations uh, in terms of geography. So, you know, that's something we rely upon to have a, a voice over Wi-Fi handset where the user can move about the facility to any particular area and have that support, not only phone calls, but messaging and other applications. So as a result of that, we're seeing probably a shift towards Wi-Fi and, and maybe DECT isn't you know, as prevalent as it once was because now we have an option for both, but DECT is certainly here to stay for quite some time and is, is very strong. So depending on which customer opportunity you have, both could certainly be valid opportunities. In a nutshell, very high level, what is DECT? Well, DECT is a, a cordless telephony solution and you have a, a DECT infrastructure provided by a DECT server and also DECT radios in the form of base stations and potentially DECT repeaters that provide a RF signal or coverage area for a DECT handset. So DECT stands for Digital Enterprise Cordless Telephony and it was developed specifically for carrying voice so it's very strong and robust and well deployed solution in terms of cordless telephony. It runs in its own frequency band, it's a dedicated frequency band for enterprise voice so very good in terms of avoiding interference and also has some benefits in terms of quality service and that type of thing. It can be integrated into an analog or IP PBX. When we say IP we're talking about SIP, Session Initiation Protocol, which as most of you will be aware is the industry standard open uh, voice protocol today and supported by pretty much any current model PBX or call server platform but we still do have the option to connect into an analog PBX and they're still certainly um, you know, deployed in a legacy sense. There's plenty of them out there and even though today it's more about SIP, we do have plenty of opportunities for analog as well. So you do get that flexibility there and voice and data are separated and certainly that is true of on the RF or the wireless side, the, as we said, only carrying voice and some messaging traffic for the DEX over the DEX infrastructure there and if we were to use an analog circuit to connect into the call server or PABX, then it's separated the whole way. Um, if we're running IP DEX, then it'll be separated as far as where it connects back onto the wide network through the, the DEX server, and then obviously it will be carried as IP traffic, but again, separated on the wireless side. Voice over Wi-Fi, on the other hand, uh, while it still does provide a platform for wireless voice devices to you know, allow the users to work throughout the environment wherever they go, it connects back through the wireless LAN. So that would be typically the same wireless LAN that is used for all other wireless IT applications within the environment. And we're simply leveraging that platform to now run our voice traffic as well. So this will be using our infrastructure of the wireless LAN controller and the wireless access points that may have already been deployed if they've been using wireless for some time or will be looking to deploy if they're looking at a voice over Wi-Fi solutions. And that could go either way can be integrated into an IP PBX, so we don't have the capability in a you know, black and white sense to hook these up to analog extensions on a PBX, but that's not really relevant in today today's uh, technology age. So again, we're talking about SIP, so open standard for voice over IP. And obviously that means our voice and data are converged onto one network, and that's true of both the wireless side and also the wide network. 
So just a bit of an overhead or an overview of each of those technologies and how they look. So one of the key points we, we want to examine when we're trying to decide which is the right fit is looking at the customer themselves. So we start by looking at the customer, who is the customer, what is their business and by looking at that and examining that closely we can start to dis determine what are the sort of um, I suppose operating methodologies and feature requirements that they would have and we might get an idea fairly quickly off the bat depending on how sophisticated those requirements are, um, you know, what solution may already be apparent as the one we'd start to lean towards, what are their technology requirements, uh, you know some environments are very light on technology depending on the nature of their business, others rely very heavily on technology and want all sorts of integrations with between the different systems to deliver a, a seamless and you know, a valuable potential uh, workflows and, and just the way they can operate to the, the customer. So that's pretty quickly going to determine one way or the other based on the capability of each solution what is a good match there. It's really important as well to look at a technology roadmap and a lot of these customers might be well aware of where they want to be today but often neglect to look at where, where things are heading and make sure that the solution that they deploy today offers some future proofing and probably a good example of that is healthcare and given that the largest vertical for this solution or either solution is, is healthcare we'll probably use that as a bit of a example throughout this presentation but you know if you look at where we're going today we're starting to see things like um, electronic patient management systems become commonplace we're starting to see RTLS real-time locationing services um, to track assets and people around environments so you know and, and barcode scanning is another good example as well using that to create audit trails for dispensing medicine keeping track of patients verifying patient identity uh, for you know staff to log into their own applications and all that type of thing so even though that that's now happening it might not be happening for all businesses and they might, might be looking to you as the sort of trusted technology advisor to make sure that a solution that you're putting in for them is not only going to meet their current needs but also allow them to add some of these additional technologies into their business and make sure that the solution that you deploy can handle that and integrate with that and continue to be useful to them for some time given the investment that they're making. As we said wireless LAN adoption is increasing um, you know it's possible that your customer is looking at that they may already have a wireless LAN it's important that the wireless LAN they deploy or look at deploying is suitable for carrying voice traffic because there's wireless LANs and there's wireless LANs and while the enterprise wireless LANs have a lot of the smarts in there to support high quality voice some of the lower end solutions that may otherwise if they weren't deploying voice support all their, their wireless needs um, may not be suitable if they're looking to add voice onto that so it's really important that if you have a discussion around wireless LAN with the customer it's not just you'll need a wireless LAN it's you'll need a wireless LAN that has X, Y and Z capabilities and features and you may want to suggest a particular platform that does support all those things for them. We have had instances of customers uh, deploying wireless LAN because they feel they need a wireless LAN but not really looking at the more um, important details of that and then they say great look I love these Spectralink Wi-Fi phones they're going to add a lot of value to my business. Unfortunately the wireless LAN that they've recently deployed and maybe made quite an investment in isn't capable of carrying uh, quality voice and supporting that. So it's important that um, you know, we can play that advisory role and, and make sure that the wireless LAN they have is suitable for the purpose. What's the site used for? Uh, that will also largely determine um, you know, what is a good fit and it's also important to keep in mind that a lot of businesses have multiple sites. So they may have a site for let's say manufacturing, another site for administration, um, another site for retail, it just depends on the business. So a lot of the time it, it makes a lot of sense to standardize on a solution across all those sites so you know, staff can move between different environments and the handset um, can automatically connect at the other side and be interoperable with all the other sites so what's um, right for one site we really want to make sure that we choose a solution that will be suitable for all those sites as well. So examining the customer and what they do and how they do it is really a, a key starting point for this discussion. And feature requirements will be a big part of that operating methodology. How do they operate? Um, what sort of features and functions do they rely on? And what sort of things would they like to be able to do as well to add value to their business? 
and we can use this table here as a little bit of a cheat sheet and say okay well in a fairly black and white sense the customer needs these particular features which system actually supports that so you know if we use this in that way we could see fairly straightforward that if they need some sophisticated sort of um, features some marquee type features um, for example their you know the smartphone option or a push to talk capability or bar code scanning then straight away DECT, you know, it's apparent that DECT doesn't support that capability so we pretty much eliminate that as a, a potential solution and, and move towards wireless LAN. However, if the, the features that they were looking for, you know, I guess were more of the standard type features, standard telephony, some cap capability for duress, um, some basic application integration, etc., then DECT might well and truly still be running there and we have to dive a little bit deeper to work out uh, other areas where we might make the decision on which technology is the best fit there. Suitability for use is a another one. Is it an environment that demands a lot of the, the handset, not only from a feature point of view, but from a physical point of view? Do we need some sort of ruggedization? Again, these handsets and solutions going largely into vertical industries means they do often take a lot of punishment in the physical sense. They get dropped, they get smashed around, they can often need to work in quite dirty and dusty environments. Um, so it's really important that the device that we select is suitable for use. And even within a, a particular solution, if we look at DEC for example, there are handsets that will deal with that type of environment and there's others that are really only suitable for carpeted offices. So we need to, on a device level as well, as a technology level, make sure that it is a suitable solution based on the customer's usage scenario. A large part of that as well will come down to suitable accessories and again very true in healthcare based on the, the way the devices are used to make sure that the accessories available for that particular solution add value and, and support the way that the customer will use that device. We'll just have a quick look at the accessories for the various solutions that we're talking about. This is the Spectralink 8400 voice over Wi-Fi um, solution here. So we can see things that we're talking about would include charging options. So um, especially the multi and, and quad charging options there. If you've got an environment that is in, let's say, healthcare and there's a shift um, cycle, so you might have you know, three eight-hour shifts every day, it's important that a user can quickly and easily do a battery change. So a user can, at the start of their shift, take an available handset from a, a pool of handsets, take a battery from the charger, snap it into the back of the phone, within 30 seconds they've got a phone that's up and running, and then repeat that at the start of the next shift. Or if the, their battery just needs to be refreshed because it's gone flat, they can quickly and easily take a battery and they can snap that into the back of the phone and they're up and running within seconds. So that's really important. Uh, we can also see in the quad charger there the the standard slimline battery which fits flush to the back of the handset. We also have an extended battery with 50% more cells and 50% you know, more life. So if you're in an environment where there is heavy application integration um, and the, the battery is really going to take quite a lot of um, you know, usage because it's not only being a voice device, it's also doing a lot more in terms of application than um, it's important that we have those sort of battery options as well. Carrying options is probably the other one, uh, the other big one, because it's not really suitable for them to carry the device in their pocket. Um, I've just seen a message here saying that you can't see the bottom row of the screen, so I apologise for that. Um, I'll make sure I read that out um, and point that out when that is the case, that you may not be able to see that. Um, so carrying options could include some sort of silicon case, where that just adds additional ruggedization to a handset which is already quite rugged in terms of being IP64 rated and also military standard in terms of bump, shock and drop protection. That would just add an additional layer for that and also facilitate things like microbial control where the handset might need to be just wiped down with some bacterial gel. Speakerphone dock could be great for a user or manager who maybe spends some of the time at their desk and they can use that as essentially a desk phone with the high def speaker dock and a battery charger and simply take the handset when they go for walking around the building and have that capability to always be accessible wherever they go. This is the pivot or the smartphone option for the voice over Wi-Fi range from Spectralink. Again we can see we've got a large number of options in terms of charging and carrying options which are designed to make the handset suitable for task. 
if we look at the deck side of things, we see the same type of accessories there in terms of you know, charging and carrying options and that type of thing. And for example, you can see there's a multi-charger that will charge five handsets at a time. Probably the key thing to say here is with the decked handsets currently, you actually have to leave that decked handset in the charger for the duration of the charge cycle. So effectively what that means is the decked handset is out of commission during its charging cycle. Whereas on the voice over Wi-Fi side, it's simply a matter of swapping out a battery and the handset doesn't really ever have to go out of usage. So in that sense, the voice over Wi-Fi solution does offer uh, an advantage. To balance that out though, we'd probably say the decked handset in general does have a longer battery life. So um, yeah, pros and cons for each solution there. But certainly accessories do form a, a key part of the effectiveness of that device for the environment. Technology roadmap we mentioned is, is really key to consider where is the customer headed towards. They may not even be aware of that, so you may need to provide some guidance for them there. We really want to take a long-term view. The last thing we want to do is deploy a solution that um, is really only going to give them a short amount of usable time, and then another technology comes along that doesn't offer integration with that solution, and therefore they've sort of lost some of their investment and have to refresh their fleet. So we take a long-term view on that and really want to understand all the potential things that are happening in the market so we can provide that guidance. You mentioned earlier PABX or call server. There's a lot of legacy analog equipment out there in the market. So we need to make sure that if we're going to put a solution in that has future protection or avoids um, having that investment expire too early, we probably have to say, well, we need to make sure that the solution offered is going to support a PABX upgrade because there's a good chance that they'll soon be moving towards a platform that supports SIP and we need to make sure we interface to that. So out of the solutions we're talking about, that would probably mean that a, a digital deck or a standard deck solution is probably not a great fit because it doesn't offer, um, well, in fact, it could offer, but it's probably not the most straightforward way to offer an IP integration. Uh, we'd probably be looking at an IP deck solution or potentially voice over Wi-Fi. Also mentioned a few times about how wireless LAN adoption is increasing. If it's an environment that has a deck solution, um, but there's some real value for them, not only for voice, but other applications to deploy a wireless LAN, it might be time that uh, the discussion was had that, well, have you looked at deploying a wireless LAN, not only for voice, for all applications, but something that we could then leverage to deliver voice, cordless voice, wireless voice as well. And applications, as we said, we'll have a look at some application examples shortly, um, but applications really going forward today and also going forward are really a huge um, part of this argument because the value that application integration can deliver to business is huge. So we need to have devices that will have a capability to integrate with the applications that are going to deliver value to their business and will just be integrated into their, their operating process because it has to be. So again, healthcare, if we look at electronic patient management, um, you know, locationing, advanced duress capability, all those types of things, we're going to need to have a device that will support that. Other environmental factors that are important here is looking at the cabling and wiring infrastructure. Do they have a, an existing cabling or wiring? Is it a brownfield site? Is it a greenfield site? Uh, what type of cabling do they have? So, you know, it, any time it's a, a greenfield site, what we find is the customers will generally go towards a voice over Wi-Fi solution uh, because they're going to typically be deploying a wireless LAN in any case and then it's simply a case of leveraging that wireless LAN to support the voice devices as well. Um, if, if it's a brownfield site, they may have an exist, existing decked infrastructure. So if it's a, an environment that doesn't need a lot of um, technology or is fairly basic in its technology requirements, it may be looking at putting a decked upgrade in there and, and maintaining a deck solution with something that still delivers the benefits but is a bit more up to date. Uh, but that can leverage their existing cabling and wiring infrastructure. And then a lot of older buildings that we come across as well, they tend to have areas, if not the whole building, where it's very difficult to cable. Uh, it can be quite difficult to get access to areas where you need to run cabling to run radios, whether that's decked or Wi-Fi. And that basically means that the cost of doing that can be prohibitive. So 
one advantage that DECT can offer us in those areas is we could, if we've got power there, uh, a GPO available, then we could run a DECT repeater which will synchronise back to the DECT base station wirelessly or over the air and that can be a way where we can get coverage into an area of a building where it just would be otherwise prohibitive to run any cable into that spot. So that's a, a case in point where, you, where DECT might get you out of a, a bit of a jam. Potential interference, this is a big one in any RF environment, so it's a, a huge environmental factor to consider. What is the nature of the environment, the char characteristics of the environment? And a lot of the time that will come down to um, the building materials as well as also what other systems or um, machinery, for example, is operating in that environment. So we could have a source of uh, interference coming from various places. Could be other devices operating on the same frequency, uh, whether that's by the nature of the device or by accident, or could be something to do with EMI. Okay, I'm just going to check. I'm getting some background noise here, so I'm just going to make sure everybody's muted. Uh, for those of you with questions, we'll, we'll get to those as well at the end of the presentation. Okay, so what can cause interference? Well, certainly on the Wi-Fi side of it, uh, as you've probably experienced directly if you've used Wi-Fi even at home, there's a number of sources of interference that could potentially cause a problem for your Wi-Fi devices. That could be something like a microwave oven, which typically interferes with some of the channels on 2.4 gigahertz. Could be a, a frequency hopping um, device like a, a Bluetooth a headset or some other Bluetooth system. It could be a consumer grade decked handset. Uh, often they also run in the, the Wi-Fi band. It could be other Wi-Fi infrastructure. Or it could be a device that doesn't actually use Wi-Fi but just emits noise on the same frequency that we might have for Wi-Fi. So we've seen this in hospitals where uh, pieces of radiology equipment um, such as the MRI scanner you see there in the middle at the bottom can actually emit noise over a frequency that can cause problems for wireless devices, particularly running on 2.4 gigahertz. So all of these sources of device of interference from these type of devices need to be taken into consideration when we're looking at a solution to deploy. DECT on the other hand, just by way of operating in its own dedicated frequency spectrum, uh, as we said 1880 to 1900 megahertz, typically does not have this issue at all. So from a, an ease of deployment and, and um, interference negation point of view, DECT um, can give us a number of benefits over Wi-Fi and that's probably not going to be the ultimate um, outcome or, or decision making factor there but it certainly could be important in an environment that just for whatever reason has a lot of interference potential. As we said that's a lot of that's due to the frequency band that each technology runs there and another factor to do with that is the footprint of coverage that you get from a decked radio, which could be a base station or a repeater, compared to that that you get from a wireless access point is quite different. So you get a much larger footprint from decked than Wi-Fi and you'll also get much better capability to punch through objects such as walls and furniture and floors and ceilings. And a byproduct of that of course is you're going to need less radios to cover an equivalent sized area if you use decked as compared to Wi-Fi. So typically what we say is about two to two and a half times the coverage footprint you'll get from DECT as compared to Wi-Fi. So if you have a budgetary constraint um, and the customer's requirement from a technology standpoint is not that sophisticated, then that might be something that leads you back towards DECT solution. Okay, budget, as we said, you know, this is the one that your customers will be asking you about probably from the get-go. How much is it going to cost me? So if we had a situation where both solutions from what we've examined so far are still both on the table as far as being suitable then budget's probably going to be the, the decisive factor here so let's have a look at um, the budget factor so the cost of handsets and the accessories and also the cost of the infrastructure that's both the infrastructure in terms of the wireless or deck infrastructure but also the cabling needed to support that and then from all those factors you know, we'd arrive at something like the overall cost. Do we want to duplicate wireless infrastructure? We certainly don't if we've got a wireless LAN that's suitable for carrying voice, then you know, we want to leverage that 
to carry our voice traffic rather than putting a duplicate wireless infrastructure, i.e. DECT, into the same environment where we also already have a wireless LAN infrastructure. Because that's not really uh, necessarily a cost effective way to do things if we can avoid it. It's worth mentioning that we do find it's, it's not uncommon, although it's not the norm, that customers still today may say we want to have a wireless LAN for all our data needs and we're going to have a DECT infrastructure purely for our voice needs. That does happen. Um, it's becoming probably less common and it's probably not so much from a budget reason or a cost reason people do that. It may be more that they've got a wireless LAN that just doesn't support voice properly um, or maybe they want to go that way to keep complexity down because wireless LANs can be complex enough without running voice and once you want to add voice into that mix it just adds a whole other factor of um, complexity into that because running voice as compared to running data applications over Wi-Fi is quite complex just due to the fact that it is a real-time application. So let's have a look at a couple of real-world examples here. What I've got is a couple of examples of sites where we have done some scoping for in one of the particular technologies and then I've just gone back and put an equivalent offering in the other solution so we can do a side-by-side -side comparison here. So if we look at first of all an aged care home with 42 beds and approximately 6,500 square metres um, of area, what we've arrived at is a figure of either six deck base stations or 15 wireless access points to provide adequate coverage to that area. In the example we've got a requirement for 20 handsets so if we look at the comparison of the 8400 series here which would be the entry level model and also a fairly um, a higher end deck handset which is really a healthcare specific handset in terms of the 7710 there you can see there is a cost differential between the handset and then also what we've done and assuming this is a, a greenfield site so this is a new build we also add in the cost of the wireless infrastructure and the deck infrastructure on the other side and through that we get a total cost of the solution itself obviously cabling and, and all that would be external to this cost but you can see there that the voice over Wi-Fi solution actually adds about 30% to the overall cost of the infrastructure. However, I guess not as black and white as that is the fact that that environment or that, that business, that aged care facility can run a whole lot of other applications over their wireless LAN, which they couldn't do over their decked infrastructure. If we look at a larger example here of a hospital with 183 beds and approximately 21,000 square metres of floor space, we're looking at either 19 deck base stations or 54 wireless access points to provide our coverage, 45 handsets. So again, uh, there's already cost differential between the handsets and then once we add our wireless infrastructure into that, we can see that we're looking at approximately twice the cost for the voice over Wi-Fi solution. And this is, keep in mind, this is all RRP pricing and excluding all the cabling infrastructure there and switching infrastructure. So again, you can see that in a side-by-side -side comparison, purely on dollar terms, the voice over Wi-Fi will come out more expensive and significantly so. However, it's more about the bigger picture in terms of what else can we leverage that infrastructure for. With DECT, nothing. With voice over wireless LAN, pretty much any other wireless needs that you have can also run on that same infrastructure. So let's have a look at application integration, which we mentioned is very important today. Uh, so we'll be looking at things like what are the supported protocols to allow development to go and write interfaces for that device to you know, connect and talk to applications. What's the level of sophistication and functionality that we need to support? Basically, in a very general sense, DECT will give us a much more basic potential for application integration with third party applications than voice over Wi-Fi solution will. Because voice over Wi-Fi, um, you know, it's a purely IP product, it's a more sophisticated system that it runs on, gives us that extra potential. But certainly, DEC does give us good um, application integration potential for more basic integrations there. So we'll have a look at some specifics there. It's important to note that both these solutions, as far as application integration, support open standards. They're not the same standards on each solution, uh, but they certainly both support open standards for development. So uh, there's an SDK for both that you can download freely from Spectralink with a web developer's guide and some sample code which you could then take to a developer 
who knows the language because it is an open language and write your interfaces there. And many interfaces have already been written, you know, let's say by the nurse call vendors, by a lot of middleware vendors. So you know, what you're looking for may already be available, but if it's not, then it's certainly um, it shouldn't be too difficult to get a application integration written. Let's start with DECT and have a quick look at some of the potential there. So one of the things about DECT is depending on which system we look for, we can either have a serial or IP interface for our application interfacing back to the application server. So if we've got some more legacy application servers in the environment uh, that do serial, then DECT may be a good fit in that sense, but it can also support IP integration as well. Uh, this is probably the most common application integration that we see out there. So a nurse call integration where uh, you know, a resident, for example, might press a call point um, in their room. That would obviously talk back to the nurse call server. We can have an interface between the nurse call server and the DEC server, which allows the nurse call server to send that information regarding that call point press into the DEC server and then pass that over to the staff member on their DEC handset with some location information. Um, there's an icon there to describe the type of alarm that they're responding to or request they're responding to with a location. They can quickly go to that location and facilitate that nurse call request. A duress alarm. The handsets, most of the handsets, certainly the ones you'd be deploying in a vertical environment, have an alarm button on top and that would allow a staff member to indicate that they need some assistance. And again, via a messaging server integration, can send that to other users on their deck handsets or other endpoints. And if there is some sort of third party locationing integrated there, which can be done with DECT, um, maybe not as sophisticated as with Wi-Fi, we can also have some location information relayed as well so that the responder will know exactly where to go um, or generally where to go to respond to that duress situation. Or if we've got a handset in the deck range that supports advanced duress, which could be a, a tear off string, for example, or has an accelerometer chip on the board, so supports things like man down, running detection or no movement detection. That's another way of triggering that duress situation as well. So typical integrations would be things like fire alarm panels, um, security alarms, temperature control, maybe it's a, a dairy let's say and one of the refrigeration units has broken down so there's a, a, um, a thermometer integrated there and, and once the temperature reaches a certain threshold that sends a message to a messaging server and then that can be relayed on or integration with the DEX server to a user that can come and repair that or look into that. Database lookups, access control systems, now we've talked about the events duress capability there and we can do IP integration. So that's pretty much the extent of what we'd see with a DEX application integration and a colourful icons there. And we can have the user also accept a request and that can go back to the messaging server and nurse call to indicate to the other users that that has been accepted. If we look at voice over Wi-Fi application integration, we can see straight away in the picture on the right there that we're looking at a much higher level, a much more sophisticated level of integration there. And a lot of that's achieved by a, a web browser interface. So we can use that to access open internet resources, but more commonly and more importantly, custom enterprise applications. So any of the, the types of um, third party applications we mentioned for DECT and many more, some of which I've already mentioned, um, you know, you can have an interface to pull information from those application servers and that could be suitable for a lot of different vertical industries. Again, we're using you know, open standard development languages there. We're talking about you know, Java, HTML, um, and it's really just a case of the, the vendor, or sorry, the, the reseller or the application developer getting the SDK freely available from SpectraLink and writing an interface there. But again, you know, most of the, the nurse call vendors and a lot of other application providers, there's already an interface written on these devices for that. So just having a quick look at some examples of how that might look on the handset. You know, if we start at, uh, let's say, one o'clock there on the dial, we can see, you know, industrial and plant equipment when it hits a certain threshold, or maybe it needs um, a top up of some consumable item that could send a message to the fitter and turner. If it's a, a retail environment, maybe there's no stock left on the shelf, but by scanning with the barcode scanner, the barcode on the shelf, you do a look up to see if there's any more stock in the stock room at the back. Uh, might be a, a doctor or a nurse tapping into 
the telemetry system of the patient's vital signs. It could be a, a property management system where the cleaner has taken a request from the property management system person at the front desk because the, the previous um, guest has checked out. They can go and replenish the mini bar, clean the room, and then enter in via the handset that the room is now clean and available. And then the next guest can be checked into that room from the front desk, might be taking a feed from a security camera to monitor a particular environment, such as a door where you could then pop the door open once you've verified someone's um, identity from the handset, or it might be just some sort of internet search or other internal custom application search using the web browser. These are the sort of integrations that we see in healthcare. Some of these could be done by DECT, um, you know, things like nurse call, staff safety, paging, etc. but others such as the barcode scanning, the RTLS, um, you know, the, the integration with patient monitoring, we'd really be looking at voice the Wi-Fi to be able to support those type of integrations there. So I guess in a nutshell what we're saying is the voice over Wi-Fi equipment and systems can support a much higher level of sophisticated application integration than DECT. Okay, so that's the customer's point of view. What about us as the integrator? Let's have a quick look at the capability that we need to have to deal with the complexity of each solution there. So I think we can safely say based on all we've seen today that DECT is a less complex solution. Now that's not to say it is not complex or that it's a simple solution. Um, you certainly need to deploy it correctly. You need to have the skills to do that. Uh, you wouldn't take it lightly because anything to do with RF certainly poses unique challenges there. That reduction in complexity compared to Wi-Fi would go right across from scoping, you know, site survey, deploying the system and troubleshooting and maintaining it ongoing. It certainly requires RF skills, but it doesn't require Wi-Fi skill sets, which can be more common, or sorry, more complex than um, what we'd need for DECT. A lot of that reduction in comp complexity comes because it has a dedicated infrastructure. So we're using a Spectralink DECT handset on a Spectralink DECT base station or repeater back to a Spectralink DECT server. And then from there, we're going to hit either our network or our PBX. So it's very much a reduction in the number of disparate systems that we need to get across um, to get to our destination from the source. So that's our dedicated infrastructure. Uh, if we looked at Wi-Fi, for example, we might be using, let's say, a Spectralink handset on a Maru access point, a wireless LAN, um, you know, back in via a HP switch to our Cisco call manager. Just by its nature, there's more um, third-party integrations involved, and as a result, the complexity is there when we talk about doing those integrations. And, and DEC might be just a straight analog connection into a, a PABX. So from that point of view, it'd be very straightforward. As we said, voice over Wi-Fi relies on other systems. So we need to have that integration done correctly to our wireless LAN to make sure the quality is there, the communication's there, uh, and then back to our, let's say, our SIP extension on our PABX. So we're relying on more systems to do that. Shared RF medium. So again, we said DECT is dedicated, that frequency band is dedicated. That's certainly not the case for Wi-Fi. So we're competing with a lot of other systems and devices for that same Wi-Fi. One thing I mentioned earlier is Wi-Fi. You know, there's Wi-Fi and there's Wi-Fi. So with the, the deck, sorry, with the voice over Wi-Fi, it's really important that you only deploy these on systems or wireless LAN platforms that have been certified by Spectralink. And when I say certified by Spectralink, it's really a partnership between the wireless LAN vendor and Spectralink to certify that particular wireless LAN for suitability with the Spectralink voice over Wi-Fi solution. So there is a program called VIEW, which is Voice Interoperable Enterprise Wireless, which takes care of that. And you can go forward confidently um, if a customer has that solution, that wireless LAN platform, or you need to propose one because they need voice over Wi-Fi, you know exactly which ones are suitable for that. And if they're not on that list, best to avoid. Um, more complex as well because they compete with other wireless applications and traffic. So you know, we need to put things in place like quality of service, VLANs, uh, wireless quality of service. There's a whole lot of stuff that we need to do, uh, which is quite complex to make sure that although we're using a shared medium, we're actually giving priority to our voice traffic. And when it comes to the deployment and also the site surveying, etc., we may need specialised tools for voice over Wi-Fi, which we wouldn't need for DECT. And I'll go into that in the next couple of slides as well. The vendors that I've mentioned for the View Certified wireless LAN platforms. Uh, these are the ones that you should be using. 
and this will just ensure that you've got all the documentation, the interoperability testing is being done by both vendors and you'll have a good outcome. And it really does revolve around the upper level, the higher level sort of mechanisms and protocols that are required to support voice. Site survey or mapping the traffic, very much required in both cases. It really is going to be the success or failure of a deployment based on having a, done a successful or a good quality site survey to make sure that our coverage is correct, the overlap between our radios is correct, we've got enough radios to provide both of those things. With DECT, it's very simple, uh, well, I wouldn't say it's very simple, it's very simple by comparison and one of the key reasons for that is the DECT system itself, which will be used to deploy, also can act as the whole site survey kit. So let's say we've got a couple of DECT handsets, we've got a DECT base station, which may also be the DECT server. Um, that's essentially all we need for our site survey kit. Now we need a battery to power it while we do the site survey. We need a mast to put the deck base station up to a, a height that's representative of where it would go once the deployment actually happens. But our deck system is its own self-contained site survey kit, which is great. So we punch a code into the handset. It'll bring up a whole heap of information on the screen, and we use that to do our site survey. If we're doing a site survey for voice over wireless LAN, now this could be a greenfield site or it might be a customer that already has a wireless LAN but deployed for data. We then need to go and redeploy that, um, resurvey that to make sure we're putting in the additional radios where they're needed to go to ensure that the overlaps and signal that's required is suitable for voice. Because as a real time application, the requirements for voice as compared to data is quite different and voice requires a higher service level. So, one of the key points here is we need to have a third-party application to map the RF. So a site survey tool, typically a software tool we run on, on a laptop, um, if you think of something like EchoHow or Air Magnet, a uh, professional site survey tool, we need a laptop to run that on and we might need a wireless dongle to uh, support that as well. So straight away we're probably looking at you know, minimum $5,000 worth of software just for the software and then any additional hardware we need for our site survey kit. Uh, we also have to be trained in that usage of that site survey software as well. It can be quite complex. We also, if it's an existing site, we need to take into account the existing traffic uh, usage and devices already using that wireless LAN. Uh, maybe that they're already really using it quite heavily and, and we need to ensure that there's enough left for voice or we restructure everything to have voice prioritised. Channel planning. Uh, if we're putting more access points in, typically means we're going to have to redo our channel planning on all the access points to avoid co-channel interference. We may have to also redo our power planning to make sure we're tuning the, the transmission levels from the APs um, to a, a suitable level so they're not overlapping with each other too much and causing co-channel interference. These things are all quite complex to do and is why it's a, a more complex solution um, to deploy and survey for voice over wireless LAN. If it's an environment where there's a lot of noise, um, a lot of activity, we also may need to do a spectrum analysis. So I mentioned earlier that uh, some of the radiography equipment you'd find in hospitals can cause EMI, which can heavily and negatively impact Wi-Fi signals. In an environment like that, we always recommend that a spectrum analysis, which is different to a site survey, is carried out. And again, that's you know, a different um, process which has its own complexities involved as well. So all of those things would apply to a, a site survey for voice over Wi-Fi. Whereas because the deck runs in its own, in, uh, its own frequency band again, we don't really worry about things like interference and spectrum analysis. So you can see that it's quite more complex to deploy a voice over Wi-Fi. Okay, we're getting towards the end here. I just want to give a few examples of some sites and what we might look at to make our decision of which is the right fit. If we start by looking at a timber yard, you know, some of the traits we'd expect to see, a large physical environment, most probably, uh, basic technology requirements. Now that may change or it may not in future. I'm generalising here of course. A low density of users and a limited budget. Well, I'd say it's quite obvious to us based on what we've looked at so far that a deck solution is probably going to fit the bill for these guys. Now, if we look at an example of a hospital, you know, hospitals, if they haven't already, they're probably looking to upgrade to enterprise wireless LAN for all those applications that we've talked about. Um, there's some of them there. So chances are they're already got a wireless LAN, an enterprise wireless LAN. They've probably got a sophisticated technology roadmap because of all the above. 
they most probably um, have a large budget um, or relatively large budget money to spend and you know may, may or may not be a greenfield site but regardless of that because of the application driver there we'd probably be looking at voice over Wi-Fi straight off the bat. Aged care, very popular either solution in aged care. Uh, if we look at a low care environment, they might have basic wireless LAN just for the admin area, might not be all pervasive in terms of geography. Uh, they might not even have a wireless LAN. Some of them are quite old school in the way they operate. They might have a third generation nurse call that runs on a serial connection for the cordless telephony interface. They might have a fairly basic technology roadmap. Uh, they may have budgetary constraints. Probably an existing site. Um, if it's a, a newer site, a greenfield site, some of those earlier points in this page may not apply. They might be a bit more sophisticated, might have the flexibility to put some additional sophistication in there. But um, if it's a brownfield site, may have some of those cabling difficulties we mentioned. So DECT is probably going to be the right fit there. Um, hotel, enterprise wireless land is probably a given, especially if it's a sort of an upper end hotel because guests generally demand really good Wi-Fi. In fact, it can be the difference between um, you know, choosing or to, to stay at a place or choosing somewhere else, the level of Wi-Fi they can access. Um, they typically have a, a wireless in, uh, guest system, so guest access for their internet access uh, with onboarding. They probably have a property management system that they want to integrate, um, given the example we looked at um, a few minutes ago. And as well as having coverage for the guests, they probably have full coverage for the back of house staff to ca carry out all their, their tasks. So the staff may have some sort of um, you know, mobile device to allow them to carry out all their functions in the back of house area as well. So they've probably got an enterprise wireless LAN that covers the whole site. And as a result, we'll be looking at probably voice over wireless LAN. Okay, so I just want to quickly wrap up and address or re revisit a couple of the, the key points there. Really, the suitability of the solution um, for both their needs today and tomorrow is key, and you know that includes the features, the functionality, the accessories available to that. If all those things are provided by both solutions, then cost differential will probably be where it comes down to. As we said, overall, uh, in a black and white sense, the deck comes out quite a lot less expensive, but doesn't deliver a lot of the benefits that Wi-Fi will. So if we look at the bigger picture, Wi-Fi may come off cheaper when we consider all the other things that we can use it for. And the application integration potential, which really today, aside from voice, is the key component to these solutions. What they're being used for um, is, yes, it's a telephone, but it's also integrated to all these other systems to enable the staff to work more smartly, more efficiently, um, you know, have workflows in place, and do all this while they're on the fly and not always walking back to a central point. Uh, they can get all this stuff while they're walking around, so very important there. And the deployment considerations are for us as the integrator. Uh, what are our skill sets? How do we get to the skill sets we need to if we want to deploy the other solution or, or one of those solutions that we don't currently do? What do we need to think about there? OK, I'll just um, check the question list here. Okay, it doesn't seem that we've got any questions. Um, so hopefully that's addressed all the key requirements to a point where you, you sort of have um, feeling a little bit more knowledgeable about evaluating both those solutions side by side. We're certainly here to assist. If you had some questions down the track, um, please feel free to talk to your channel manager or you know we do pre-sales and all that type of stuff. So um, you know we can certainly have that discussion um, if and when the time's right, if that's uh, maybe some time down the track, we can revisit this stuff. And as well as that, this webinar has been recorded. So we'll send through a, an update um, or a link that will take you to our YouTube channel following the webinar. And then down the track, if you want to revisit any of these um, key points here or this topic, you can certainly do that by the recording. So thanks very much for your attendance today. I hope it's been worthwhile for you and we will be running many more webinars in the near future. So just keep your eye on our weekly newsletter, which has a list of the upcoming webinars. Thanks very much for your time.